Hello everyone. Welcome to our virtual ghost stories. I'm Sarah Blanchett, curator of education for the High Point Museum, but tonight I am your mistress of ceremonies. Get comfortable, get your snacks, and don't forget to take a picture of your setup as you see ours using hashtag HPM ghost stories. Let's get started. The first story you'll hear is about Herschel, the ghost of High Point University's Old Memorial Hall. The Old Memorial Auditorium on High Point University's campus was built in the 1950s for the Drama Department. It's said that Herschel Farquhar, a theater student, thought himself a playwright. By producing one of the plays, he got a bit full of himself and was made fun of by the other students. On opening night, Herschel hanged himself in the costume ring. He began to haunt the building, mostly playing pranks such as turning lights on and off, raising the window blinds, or causing ice spots people would encounter. Some people reported seeing shadows pass by where there should be no shadows. In the mid-1970s, Herschel was seen watching rehearsal from the front row wearing an overcoat and hat. Others found Herschel less than friendly and reportedly refused to be in the building alone. Ooh, that is a creepy story. Memorial Hall was actually demolished and in place of it is the Phillips School of Business. I wonder if those business students ever got a visit from Herschel. The next story was actually reported by the High Point Enterprise in 2012. I'm sure most of you have heard the story or even experienced the ghost of Emerywood, Mr. Martin. In 1978, Mary Ann and Ray Hepler bought a home in Emerywood from Lucille Martin. Lucille's husband, Kemper Martin, had died in the home the previous November from emphysema, and Mrs. Martin moved to the Presbyterian Homes Assisted Living Facility. At first, footsteps were heard by the Heffler family, and sounds like the furniture was being moved in other rooms. Lights were turned on, which should have been off. Doors opened that were left closed. Heavy breathing was also heard, but family members also reported seeing a ghost in the house, a figure surrounded by a bright light and wearing a flannel shirt. The Hepplers also noticed the smell of tobacco smoke as they began home improvement projects around the house. Mr. Martin had been a heavy pipe smoker. Eventually, Mr. Martin went away, and some ghosts do that, but some don't. Listen to the story about Private Dunn, the ghost of Abbott's Creek. This story goes back to the American Revolution when Cornwallis's army passed through the area in 1781 on the way to the Battle of Guilford Courthouse. Burdened with supplies, cannons, and stolen goods, they were moving slowly in pursuit of General Morgan and General Greene's forces of the Continental Army. By February, they were in the Abbott's Creek area and Cornwallis felt they needed to be moving faster. It is said that Cornwallis carried with him a wagon load of treasure, which he decided to bury and come back for. Soldiers, including a private Dunn, set about digging a deep hole to bury bar barrels of this treasure. One of the heavy barrels rolled off the wagon while they were digging, and it fell on Dunn, who screamed in agony as he was crushed. The soldiers buried their companion with the treasure. Cornwallis's army went on to defeat General Greene's army at Guilford Courthouse on March 15th. They traveled onto the coast to Wilmington with a crippled army. Cornwallis then decided to march north to join British forces holding Tidewater, Virginia and fortify the river port of Yorktown. There, besieged by the Allied French and American forces under George Washington, Cornwallis was forced to accept their terms of surrender on October 19th. 1781. So what a poor private done. It is said that ever since the British left, a shriek 
of sudden death can often be heard along the banks of the creek, not far from the Highway 64 bridge. I hope you enjoyed listening to some of the spooky tales and legends of the area. I know some of you have probably experienced your own weird, unexplainable, spooky thing. I know I have. In my childhood home, sometimes I get a visit or two from a deceased family member, or sometimes I hear my dog settling in the kitchen even though she's passed 15 years ago. Every place has a story, and sometimes we just have to stop and listen in the dead of night.